Del tell us. <laughs> Well, Mr. Donham, first of all, since I am from the Dallas-Fort Worth area, I have to welcome you and say that Thank we're you very much. delighted to have you here and delighted that you brought your film here for the press to come from all over the country to get a first look at it. Thank you. And I just, I don't often make predictions, but I think this is going to be a big commercial success. Let's hope so. It has the humor. I think it's really the kind of film that our young audiences particularly today are really going to enjoy and the word of mouth ought to be wonderful. So uh, that's got to make you very happy. It certainly does. Yes. Thank you. I read and then Michelle told me the same thing that... Um, Must be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well that's why I bring it up to you. Uh, that you saw a small photo of her in W. That's right. And that you, uh, it, she attracted your attention and you tracked her down to find out who this young lady is. Now from a small photo, as I understand it was even a group photo. That's right. What in the world did you see that caught your uh, eye? I just thought it was a very attractive, young, bright-looking girl. That's all that caught my eye. I was seeing hundreds of other girls. It wasn't that I didn't look at the photograph and say, that is the girl who is going to play that part in this movie. I simply said, oh, there's an attractive girl. S find out who that is and see if she's interested, see if she's interesting. I did that with a lot of other girls who didn't get the part. She's not the only one that I saw photographs and said, come in. I, I interviewed actresses. I did everything I knew. I went to New York and interviewed actresses. I had open calls in California. I had open calls in New York. I did everything I knew to find somebody who I thought would be good in this part. And she came in, interviewed, then auditioned, and eventually made a test, and then got the part. What was the quality, or what did she have that all these other girls did not have? Well, it's hard to say one particular thing. A beautiful you, body, for one well, thing. Certainly a beautiful <laughs> body and a beautiful face. But uh, she ha also has a gift for acting, and, she, the, and her own personality is well suited to play this role. And she understood the behavior of this girl f from inside herself, and she understood the way she acted and the way she felt. And she was unafraid. She trusted that she could do it, which was... Uh, to say the least unusual, because most people, under the pressure of doing it, become very frightened. And as soon as one is frightened, you're finished. It's the end of your ability to act. So she had a lot of qualities that made her good for this role. Was there ever at any time, though, that uh, she kind of backtracked and might have been embarrassed or, I mean... If it was, no, I don't think so. I never saw it. I never saw it. Now, what about Michael Caine? Michael is one of my favorite actors, I have Mine to tell too. you that. And uh, certain people might have done that role and come across as a dirty old man. He does not. Well, it would have been difficult to, with me making a picture for anybody to come across as a dirty old man because I never saw the picture f from the point of view of the man running and lusting after the girl. On the contrary, he's constantly rejecting her and saying, no, we can't, we mustn't, we not again, no more, the end, stop, I won't. And uh, you can't think of anybody who really means that as a dirty old man. And in the, ultimately, you have to think, oh, the poor sod, of course he'd give in, to, particularly to that girl in those surroundings, that beautiful girl, that incredible body, that incredible quality, that incredible joy of living, the fun of youth, the freedom of sexuality, the music, as they say, the music, dancing, the birds, the fruit, blame it on Rio. Was Michael apprehensive about working with a newcomer? Not for a second. Michael is apprehensive about nothing. He's absolutely the courage of a lion. He's just uh, a remarkable person. He, he never feared. He read the script and said he wanted to do it, and he came into it with full guns and uh, went for it. And it's a part, a kind of role that I, he's never played before, the particular character. He's played comedy. He is a wonderful comedian. He could be a stand-up comic, actually. He's great as a monologue, you know, which he, he's also great at writing his monologue. That is, he improvises remarkably funny things. Some people, I've heard a few comments, and I don't want to say, I wouldn't even hazard as to what percentage, but a few people have said, women who've seen the movie, Mr. Donnan, that they feel it is a very sexist movie. Now, um, what would Did you... Did you? 
No, sir, I, I'll be honest with you. Uh, Please I'm going to be, be real honest, honest with, with you. There were a couple of shots that I thought maybe went a little far. Um, well, did that make it sexist? Uh, 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 no, no, it did not. It, it is so funny, and I it is such... I assume when you say sexist, you mean uh, 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 from a man's point of view of having a woman as an object. I don't know really what they mean, mm. Mr. Donovan, because I, I, I didn't think it was sexist. Because to me, it's a sexual fantasy. It's fantasy. No, I think it's close to reality. There I disagree with you a little bit. The situation, I think, is very true. I don't think it's at all an exaggeration that young girls today seduce a lot of men that are much older than they are and, and have crushes on them and express it in a physical way and, and walk away. I don't think that's the slightest bit of a fantasy. So if a person or a woman, let's say, or maybe even some men, I know of one man who has uh, three daughters, mm -hmm. and oh, he's real uptight about the movie. But mm -hmm. anyway, so what would you say to these people who feel Well, I'd say, are you joking? Do you think it doesn't happen? And, and, and is it so terrible? That's, what, that's what's funny about the movie, is we make a huge tempest about it, but in fact, it's only a slight indiscretion. It's a funny indiscretion because of, of our uptightness. If people weren't uptight about it, it wouldn't be funny. It's only funny because they respond in such a terrified manner. Oh, it mustn't be so. That's why, that's why and when you expose that they really want it and are lu as lustful as everyone else and as randy as everyone else and as sexual as everyone else and as uh, able to be uh, in the right moment to, to, to wander from what they think is the straight and narrow path, that's why the picture's funny. The character Michael plays is a rather uptight creature caught in that situation. It's real. Okay. <laughs> it's not a fantasy. Mm -hmm. um, if I may, uh, I, I must ask one more question, and it has nothing to do with this film, so forgive me if I, if I may. Uh, because you have had close working and, I assume, personal relationships with two people in this business I just admire, Gene Kelly and Fred Astaire. Yes. Now, Mr. Don, the two of them, great dancers, actors, what if you had to say the difference between Gene Kelly, Fred Astaire, how would you sort that out? Well, in the, in the way that almost everyone else does, uh, Fred Astaire, it, it, it's easier to describe Gene. He was a very athletic uh, person. He was a, a person who played ice hockey and who was physically very powerful in his body and whose dance reflects that. When he dances, you see this very physical, powerful person. In Fred Astaire, you see someone quite different, someone who's very delicate in their movements, whose uh, way of expressing himself is much uh, different from the way that Gene does. Uh, the, their differences are so obvious that just, I don't think one need go beneath that. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Again, I'll just repeat what I said in the beginning. I think that uh, Blame It on Rio is going to be a big hit for you. Thank you. And again. I think audiences are going to have a lot of fun with it. Good. And thanks for talking with us today, Mr. Don. Thank you. Nice to see you here nice in Dallas. Nice to see you. Good interview. Excellent interview. Thank you. Excellent interview. And I'll start with just.